Okay, great. Hi, this is uh, Sam Hartman again, and um, I have the pleasure now to introduce Michael Bank, who's going to be talking about uh, FAI and uh, Go Goza. Goza. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I just realized I didn't know how to pronounce that. Um, so this morning at the ball, one of the things that we talked about was um, whether there was any tools that were sort of at the you know between the kind of stuff Russ was talking about last hour and um, sort of the, the one machine. Um, and it sounds like Michael's going to be talking about what fits really nicely into that space, um, at least on the side of installations um, and, and um, you know, how that works for, uh, insul for repeatable installations for small, for small organizations. Uh, and so I'm, I think this will be very interesting. Thanks, Sam. So I'm Michael Bank. Um, I have contact with uh, FAI and Goza through my uh, work. I'm done. I'm working professionally for Kudativ, and we are helping the city of Munich to um, get the most out of FAI and Goza. So um, they are doing some pretty large scale thing, as you might have heard. They're trying to migrate all their 15,000 desktops to Linux. So they're doing quite some heavily modified stuff. So basically, um, they are based on Edge, but they don't call it Edge even more. They have some other release name scheme, not Toy Story. And there's a lot of um, packages that they forked and a lot of packages they added. And uh, that's, that's one thing. And the other thing is that also they're, they're using uh, FAI and Goza in, in a pretty pushy way. Oh, it's pushing the what Goza can do in some sense. So they're, they're using multiple servers. They're t these servers are talking to each other. And I'm not going to talk about that tonight or today. Um, but I think it would be interesting because there were there had to be quite a lot of modifications to be done to to get this setup going or it's still ongoing, I guess, to, to migrate, so we're still helping them. And it would be nice to at least get, get some, some parts out of it for, for regular stuff. So I'm not going to talk about server-server integration. That's maybe for another year, because it's just so far away from anything you can easily uh, do on Debian right now. It really takes a lot of integration work. But yeah, so first of all, uh, who knows FAI? Uh, who has used it already? Not that many people, actually. I thought like, everything would go up. And who, who knows Goza? OK, so quite a few less. Um, yeah, FAI is probably much well, more well known. Um, as a disclaimer, I'm not that much of an F FAI expert as uh, compared to other people in the room. Um, we're mostly working on the Goza side, but I would really like to present what you can do with Goza and FAI and how you can um, install and, and manage uh, systems with it. And, okay, so FAI, as Russ just said, it's, uh, it's one of Debian's success stories. It's, it's really great. Um, it's, on the other hand, quite size admin centric, I would say. So you need to, it's, it's very command line based. You, you program in, in Perl and, well, see if engine or shell in order to get things going as you want. And, well, the tagline is plan your installation and FAI installs your plan or FI installs your plan. I still don't know what, what the real pronunciation is there. And it's implemented in Perl. No, sorry, it, what is it then? Shell and Shell, Pearl. Shell and Pearl, okay. Others. But, okay. So, this is the part uh, which is probably pretty well known. I mean, I'm not going to talk too much about FAI, just, just a bit about how it's, how it's working. Basically, you get a client-specific Pixie config so the clients will boot over DHCP and then get um, 
get a config which gets um, generated or which gets generated by the file change boot program. And depending on that config, um, it either says reinstall or local boot. So then the client knows whether it should go into installation mode or just um, boot from local from the local hard drive to to get a regular um, boot up going. And then um, clients boot over NFS. So there is a central server which serves the uh, the root file system over NFS. And from there on, uh, the init system is basically just phi itself, so there's no, no regular init. Um, and, and phi then runs a couple of scripts which determine which classes there are. So basically, the classes then, in the, in the phi concept, classes say what, what particular parts of phi should get done are applicable to that particular client. So you can customize for, for a range of clients or for one particular client, you can customize different ways of installation. Yeah, the, so the, these classes get determined and uh, their configuration space gets determined. And I will talk about that a bit in a bit. Then the installation gets executed in the sense that the target file systems get partitioned and, and created and the packages get installed and scripts and so on get, get executed. And in the end, the, this client-specific pixie config will get set to local boot, so the next time uh, it will not get reinstalled again, but will boot from local disk. And in general, it's possible to do post-install management via the soft update mechanism, which um, I believe is not that heavily used, but you can use it to figure out which packages should be on and which package should get removed or whether packages should be all get updated if they are. Um, or you can add probably new packages which you think should be on that, that host. So, five classes in more um, detail. They define how specifically a client get installed, and well, it's it's you can so as I said, it's size admin centric. It's it's Perl and shell, so you can do whatever you want in in, in some constraints. So, but generally, I believe you take hardware specific or feature specific or client purpose specific classes. So, say you have a class i386, which you can always query and, and do various things which should be done on i386 compared to maybe AMD64, like installing the right kernel and that kind of stuff. Or say Grub or Lilo, if you will say, okay, this, this, thing, this computer doesn't boot with uh, Lilo or this computer doesn't boot with Grub, so you can set a specific class for that kind of computer. Or um, things like GNOME or server, you can, you can make up packages lists of different packages which should get installed on, on one um, machine so the purpose of the machine gets uh, executed. Basically, how it is done is there is a couple of scripts, or you can of course add new ones, which get run on during, during boot by this phi, phi init, and they determine the classes. So basically what they output on, on, on standard out is, is what the classes will, will get added to the classes. So in this case, um, you name will be um, put into to uppercase, and then as you see, this would be the i386 or AMD64 class in the first line. <coughs> and, and then the next one would be also uh, well, the package there, and, and other things. So that's like system dependent, and other thing, other um, classes would be host dependent. For example, here there's a host name demo host. So, so basically, this is taken from the from the um, phi example classes. Just so you can, if you want to look it up, it's the phi dash doc package under user share doc phi doc example simple. So there you can have a look how phi classes are. Uh, are looking like, and, and this is um, from, from that example if you want to look it up. 
And then here you can say that if the class is E386 or AMD64, then also install grub, for example. So you can, you can do that. And in this case, the host demo host would have the package-based classes Firebase, DHCPC for DHCP client, and demo. And every, any other client, of course, you can add your own here, would have only Firebase and DHCPC. And then you have a list of classes which apply to that particular client. And from these classes, there is a couple of um, different things that are getting run. Um, various, uh, various types of um, classes, you can say. And they are all below the so-called config space. In the class directory itself are the scripts, which I was just talking about, which de determine the classes. But there is also, um, there can also be variable files, which uh, are the class name dot var, and they just contain variables. For example, in the simple classes, they also contain a hashed um, root password uh, during for, for the for the installation client and, and other things, and they can be used later on by scripts and, and hooks. Um, the first thing which gets looked at is the disconfiguration class, which figures out or tells you how to partition a host. So the host gets automatically partitioned based on what kinds of partitions you want. You can put any kind of uh, partition in and do basically it looks, uh, well, there, it's, it's more like, a, it looks like a table and you say the mount point and how much size it should be. So for the boot, boot file system, you would have a couple of hundred megs and for the home file system on a desktop, you will say, okay, I take the rest of the, of the disk and stuff like that. And um, you can do pre-seeding of variables, which everybody probably knows about. For depth variables, you can, you can put them in the depth conf class in, the, in a general format, which is depth conf set selections. And there in the package config will determine, will have a list of packages to install and a method of it. You can also say uh, in a class, well, if also that other class is, is there, then also install these and that packages. And well, files is, is an, are files you can, which you, that's a bit difficult to, to explain. They, um, the, you have a directory hierarchy there, and these files then get copied over by fcopy, um, which you have to do in one of the scripts. I will talk in a minute. So you basically say for the file um, boot grub menu list, you would have files slash grub slash s slash boot slash grub slash menu list slash and then uppercase g r u b if as it pertains to the grub class. And they can also have post ends and pre ends scripts which run directly before or after the file gets copied, um, and they are prepend so they just pre uh, postpone <laughs> prepend by pre ends post ends. And finally, you have the scripts which do all the configuration, and they are uh, they have a um, priority, or like a two digit priority for each class, so they will get run in succession. So you can say, well, which script should be run first and later and so on. And there, again, you can use the variables or the installed files to do various um, packaging or various uh, setup stuff. And the hooks, it's a bit different. They're not running in, in that particular order, but you can hook into some parts of FAI um, and do things you've you believe should be done at that point. For example, when there's an error, you can do some more cleaning up you want to do uh, on your site, or what to do on a soft update action, and, and what to do when cost software gets installed. OK, so that's, that's a very short overview of FAI. I mean, if there's more questions about that, I can we can go to that back later. But now I want to. Um, go a bit into to Goza because that's probably a part which is not so well known. It's, um, it's a configuration management system built by a German company called Gonikos. 
and it's, it's LDAP backed. So basically, everything is stored in LDAP. And as a front end, you have a web web based front end, which brings me back to this um, size admin thing I was talking before. So as you can see, it's, it's very much different to what regular size admins would go to. I mean, it's, it's um, something which, for example, for, for the city of Munich is very important because uh, the team is only like a dozen people, but um, there is tons of admins who have to finally install all these 15,000 um, machines that they don't want to uh, do that all by themselves. They're just um, providing the infrastructure. And all the admins are not necessarily trained in, in Perl or Python or, or, or CF Engine and Shell and FAI. So for them, it's quite convenient that people are able to do that kind of things in, in the web front end. So it's not necessarily not necessary that you're a senior Unix size admin to do that. It it has some terminal and server desktop integration called Goto, which I believe stands for Gonicos uh, Terminal Operations or something. Um, where for each user you can, for example, define in LDAP um, shares which should get mounted, or desktop icons which, which should show up. And it's actually pretty KDE-centric still, I believe. I mean, I'm not talking about that here, just saying that it's possible. And they're using it for the city of Munich to, to do various customizations of, of the KDE desktop. So that, that's quite nice. And it has a pretty powerful plugin infrastructure. So there's loads of plugins. As you can see, you can do a lot of um, management of various things. I mean, the most important probably is maybe the mail stuff on for your um, favorite mail or groupware um, server. So all the mail gets routed uh, properly and, and things like that. And you can do that via LDAP lookups. So basically, what you need to do to hook into, to hook into that is that your system is able, or that's at least the perfect way, is able to, to hook up or to look up things in LDAP, and Goza will, will do that for you, and then you have the integration going, and you can easily manage that. And what I'm talking about, what, I, what I'm going to talk about is how it can be used for system management. That means installing and keeping up to date um, workstations, servers, well, also terminal clients. So the difference to uh, FAI is it's implemented in PHP. And it's, it can be sometimes flaky. I mean, there's some very um, stable parts of it, but especially the system integration um, part is not very, very uh, stable yet. So just as a, as a data point, we so far, everything we were looking at for the city of Munich even when we thought it was, had something to do with FAI, it was actually always a Goza bug. So there was never any problem with FAI on, on, for that project, at least. Um, it was always, always a problem with Goza. Okay. I mean, just so you get a look, or you get, you get a hold of uh, how it looks like, I can quickly show you it's uh, the main Goza screen with, with just a couple of plugins. So as, as you install more plugins, more um, would get uh, visible. And probably have to log in again. No. So right now, this is just a test setup. So one thing I'm also not going to talk about is, is migration of data from in, in LDAP. So that's, that can be a bit tricky. If you have large uh, installation and you have lots of stuff already, lots of users already in LDAP and then maybe some custom objects and, and things like that, then it could be quite tricky to get it probably with go going with Goza, but it certainly can be done and it has been done. And there is also some migration assistance and things like that. But yeah, basically, uh, well, the administrator is able to do quite a bit, but users are able to, to change all their stuff, change their, their password, and as in, well, for example, this seems to be not working, but you can add users to groups. 
or uh, change your uh, home directory and, and, and their account, change how their password should be done and stuff like that. I mean, things that you could do easily as a, as a Unix admin, but which might be not so obvious to people who are, are new to this. It has um, departments, so you can set up different, mm, always wants me to cancel. So you can set up different departments. Actually, the, the city of Munich is using, using hundreds of those. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to talk much about that. And um, you can group things, group people into groups. So you can have like a group of admins or a group of users or a group from, from that department and give them different, different things like different uh, default shares they should have on the login and things like that. Okay, what, what, the, what the thing is I want to show is the systems plugin. And here you see three servers. So I put some two shadow servers, which is FTPDE, Debian, Arc as a, a package repository, and uh, Debian pool NTP Arc as a time server. And Nighthawk is my local server that uh, I've reproduced here. And so you can see the server, the IP address, MAC address. And uh, well, this is not applicable because I just ins installed the server uh, automatically, not, not via this um, mechanism, but if you want, you can do that as well. For example, the city of Munich, they install all their Goza repository servers via Phi as well. Okay, well, just going back for a second. So what can you do with Goza and, and Phi? Um, you can edit classes in LDAP or in the web front end, basically. So that's, of course, on the other hand, also, I mean, it's, it's quite nice for non-tech-savvy people, but on the other hand, it's not the greatest thing, of course, if you're used to doing that in VI or Emacs. So I can show you how that is done. This is the software deployment module, and you can define various releases. I defined a Lenny release. And basically what I did here is uh, recreate the, the simple demo class of Phi. Um, so you have, as I said, you have this <coughs> grub class, which has as a template this boot grub menu list file. You can upload the file or you can edit the file. Oops, sorry. So this would be the file. It's, it's also stored in LDAP, um, base64 encoded. So everything's really in LDAP. And with that file, you have scripts. These are the three scripts which, which are done by the, by the default simple class who, which set up grub appropriately. And this one, for example, does the F copy of this uh, menu list entry. And this is the post in script, which are recreated here, which um, sets in the right boot device, boot partition into the menu list so everything gets, gets done appropriately. So as you can see, you can, you can edit this over the web front end. Um, I'm perfectly clear that it's not the thing that some people at DevConf might do, but I want, just want you to, to convey that it's, it's certainly a good thing for people who are not that experienced, um, who can do this kind of things easily. This would be the domain package list. In our network terminal. Oh, there we are. So this is these are the, the main packages for for this. And what you can also do is um, edit the depconf 
Well, not in this one, apparently. So there is some limited functionality for configuring packages for preceding. It's not working very well all the time, but, but for, for, for a reasonable subset, it, it works rather well. So you, can, you, can, you see the, the templates in here. They get extracted out of the packages, and people can then decide what, what should be the configuration option, options for that, and they get, get implemented. Good. So go back to the talk. Then, yeah, as I said, you can edit the, the classes in LDAP only. I mean, that's maybe something which should be thought of uh, in the future. I don't know. And you can assign a repository and an FAI profile. So the, the difference between FAI, as I said before, and Angoza is that through to this shell script evaluation uh, in the beginning of FAI, you have a very dynamic way of, of doing things. And also, for example, in a package list, you can tell what other packages should get installed if another class is there. So you don't have this kind of uh, dynamic thing. So this is a pretty static way. So every, um, the, the whole configuration space of five for one client is, is predetermined. What you can do, though, is you can put several profiles. So profile is a list of classes to apply. So it's a set of classes, basically. And then you can, you can say, OK, I have uh, one package list uh, for this, and then I have a slightly modified package list for that. And depending on the, the client I want to install, I'm choosing this profile or that profile, which would include the right package list or the right scripts or that kind of things. So the easiest way to, to install a client would be to, to add a profile to it. And what you can also do is you can, you can set an action. I mean, you can set a wake up for things which can be woken up over, over uh, Ethernet. Or a reinstall or soft update mechanism that would get triggered by the next reboot. What you can also do is monitor the installation progress, which is it's pretty nice. So if you have like 50 different clients which are installing, you can see them all on one page, uh, what their progress is, whether they had a problem. That's actually, I think, one of the main advantages. I'm not sure about any other like five. I mean, of course, you can always look at the, the file log files on the clients or on the server, but that's a nice way to have a good overview. And you can also install, you can also view the file installation logs of that. They get sent to the server and they get stored in the, on the server, and, and you can you can look at them in, in a somewhat convenient way. Um, the other thing is you can mass install a list of clients, so that's also a feature that City of Munich is using a lot. So you you can have a CSV list of MAC addresses and what time they should get insta be installed, and you can import that, and then all the clients will get installed at that time. Or you can just uh, click through a list of all the systems and say, OK, every system which has this name or, um, well, click through, and they get all installed at the same time. So how does it work in, in practice? It works in so far that Goza hooks into Fi at, at various places. So the first thing is that the TFTP boot um, service gets supervised by a program called FTS. And this one, so if, um, if the client, the booting client requests the, the configuration file from, uh, for itself by, by running, uh, by requesting pix, pixie, conf, pixie boot dot config uh, slash its MAC address, then there's a fuse file system which will uh, figure out the read on, on that f non existing or virtual inode, and FTS will then query the Yeldup database via a FI module what the, what the system status is of that, system, of that particular client. And if it's set to local boot, it will generate a pixie config for local boot. If it's set to install, then it will generate an appropriate pixie config for install. So, and then it will, um, well, write it out dynamically on the fuse file system for that client which can re who, well which can read it and will boot accordingly so that's the first thing and the well the installation and the 
root, uh, root file system over NFS is basically the same thing, except that for uh, also Goza hooks into make NFS make phi NFS root script, which generates uh, generates the NFS root and does a couple of um, local uh, changes there as well. And then the main difference is the configuration source. So the variable phi config source is set to Goza, which means that the script user lib phi get config via Goza will get executed. And this one runs the so-called Goza system integration client on the client, which talks over, um, over the network, over a socket with, the, with another Goza system integration server on the server and um, does a shake, handshake at the beginning and then will um, tell about the, um, about the status of the installation and other things later on when the client has been booted, uh, you can, for example, trigger a reboot on it and it will do that on the client. And then it runs ldap 2 phi, which is the main script uh, which does the configuration space determination. So it queries ldap for um, the client classes and configuration spaces, so which profiles do pertain to that client and it figures out which classes are in that profile and then it downloads um, all the necessary scripts, hooks, and, and variables, and partition tables, and stores them on, on the disk, um, as, as is for a regular static um, phi config space. But that's, that's a dynamically generated one. It merges in a couple of default classes, which do um, some goza specific things as well. And there are a couple of hooks which override some parts of goza, uh, some parts of phi for example, for the progress um, thing the, and, and stuff like that. And then the installation gets executed. And during that, um, go to file progress, we'll send that progress uh, over the server via GoZSI. And after that, file state is again set to local boot. And just, um, well, so the main problem is it's not as easy as app get install goes up plug in file. So it's not quite, I mean, the, the status so far is that Goza itself, just this like last month, or yeah, late last month, was finally updated to the 2.6 version, which is the newest version. So that's finally in, in, in unstable and probably soon in squeeze. But um, Goza SI has not been uploaded yet. It needs a couple of more Perl modules and maybe some more integration. And the other problem, of course, is for setting up Phi itself. It's, it's pretty, pretty difficult. So if you just set it up, it doesn't really uh, do much itself. You need integration with uh, LDAP a lot. You need to do quite some other things. And uh, especially for the FAI plugin and the GoTo plugin, which is dependent on that, <clears throat> you need to install quite a couple of Perl modules, which are not have which have not yet been uploaded as well. So, um, what what is there and what I've been working on over the the last couple of weeks is um, Mark Pavli Pavlichuk has been creating some installed scripts. So, basically, what he's doing is they, these are scripts you can run. And then when apt-get install or um, build from source appropriate packages you need. And they might then they will also modify the well, they modify, for example, the PHP config because some parameters have to be set. So it's it's something that it's not very um, very nice at the moment. It needs much more integration. But with those scripts, you can at least try it out on, on a on a host and then see whether whether that setup might might suit you. And it, for example, it adds all the schemas, uh, schemas to slapd.conf. Uh, it does, it does other, other stuff. And as I said, it compiles unavailable module packages from subversion. So I fixed it up quite a bit to, to get it working because I think he never managed to get, to get a real client installation working with it. Um, there were quite some loose ends. So for example, he, he, didn't, he hadn't set the file config source variable to Goza. So it just didn't do anything. It just did the regular file install, basically. Stuff like that. So 
Um, I just want to uh, demo now for, for a second if I manage to uh, set up or add a new uh, client. While so uh, you can create a new workstation. Let's call it demo host. There is I set up a virtual box image for this with this uh, MAC address. There we go. You have to set NTP server. You have to set kernel and LDAP server. And here you can assign, as I said, you can assign a repository and the uh, um, file classes. So this is my my local repository, which uh, has been is just a regular Lenny uh, repository which I have cloned on on this external. Um, USB hard drive for, uh, well, performance reasons. Lenny is the only release I have, and these are the classes uh, that I, that I um, um, defined, and I'll take this demo host profile. You also have to set use DCC. And then there's the new demo host. It's still blocked. Activate it. So now I'm not sure whether it will actually work. We will see. Okay, so it's booting from local disk, which means that it didn't figure out it correctly from LDAP. So there, there's a problem there. Um, just so you can, you can see how it looks like, I can try to quickly force it into installation mode, if that works. Oh, there we go. I hope that helps. One second. Now it's running the VM Linux install um, kernel. It's running. It's loading the the init RAM disk. And it will immediately boot from NFS root. Takes a bit. Okay. So can. There we go. Well, so just to to finish up this uh, while it's while the demonstration is going. Um, as I said, it's it's very much a work in progress still. I mean, it's works. It you can well for except for that that slight problem I was just fixing. Oh. Uh, okay, yeah, that's that's what my. Uh, Problem with the port mapper usually. Great. <laughs> it's getting better. Yeah, it's it's not.
I'm also doing this in a change route, so I didn't want to uh, use my whole notebook for this. So this is why it's a bit weird setup, which I hope, there we go. It has booted the NFS route, and it's now booting the real one. And now you can see the, the progress of the installation of Phi. It has created all the scripts and the templates over LDAP, and it's now um, performing the file installation. That was a bit fast, maybe, but now it does the, it does the partitioning. It's uh, making the file systems. And here you can see the, the progress. It's inspecting the hard drives. Yeah. So, and on the Goza side, there is a system deployment status. And it should show. In principle. Hmm. Well, that's the demonstration effect. Usually, it should show the status of uh, the installation. Did it, did it fail? Uh, well, I'm sorry about that. Not sure what's wrong. I'm. I had it working for quite. Yeah, um, maybe I didn't properly. Ah, there we go. I think you've I didn't. the, the uh, <laughs> demos never work law. Sorry? You've hit the law of demos never work. Well, yeah, I forgot. Uh, I didn't invite my the, the Debian repository into it, so I couldn't find the packages. That was the, the problem. Now it's again booting from local disk. Okay. Well, I think we're we're running out of time anyway. So is there ten minutes? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's virtual box. There is um, any questions? Yep. Yep. Uh, do you want to repeat or? We'll I'm Jeff Crompton from Trinity College. Uh, yep. My first question uh, is, in Goza, are there tools for mass account creation? If you get a CSV list or a database lookup of a bunch of names and maybe uh, you know your company ID, can you do a mass account creation? Well, you can certainly mass add LDAP uh, entries. Because you display you know, doing a, an account creation of a single person. Yeah. Is there a way to do that more efficiently for 300 well, yeah, as, people? As I said, you can just uh, you can just create the LDAP objects. So just, another day. just so LDIF I'm, however I'm not, you want to yeah, do it. Yeah, right, an LDIF file if, if it's the right um, schema and everything. I mean, in generally, it's certainly possible for uh, certainly possible to just migrate your your existing LDAP. And that's the main reason to do it. Uh, it just might be a bit hairy at some. I, mean, I don't know. You have to fix up some f stuff. Uh, depends on what schema you were using and stuff. But yeah, that's possible. And of course, you can just, I mean, everything you can do in the, in the web, you can just do via LDAP manipulation over, as you just saw, for example. I, I have no idea why it currently it doesn't work. Um, so I'm just putting the file state back to, where is it? To install, it's in install anywhere. So yeah, further questions? Okay, I'll take another question. Yeah. Um, can FAI install? Can FII install non-Debian things? That's can a question to 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 FAI people. It's uh, yes. Will you do you want to answer it? Yes. So the answer was yes. The answer. Um, can it install things like Zen Server? 
Zen? Zen server? Yes. And the answer was yes again. <laughs> That's a very what, what is Zen server? Is that a special distribution of from Zen source or? No, I mean it's the. Uh, or is it just a Debian based Zen? Zen server is sold by Citrix. Okay, right. So it's. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, can you please stand up? Oh, it's on? Okay. Um, for LGRP schema, uh, when you create a user, uh, there are standard schema or uh, what? what is it? Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not too sure on, the, on that question, actually. There is certainly a standard schema. So it, um, I don't think it's particularly weird uh, in a sense, um, but I'm not, I mean, I don't, I don't really know um, what is standard in, in that sense, so I can't really, so I just invite you to, to look at the, the schema that they're using. For, uh, I can. for a mail user, for example, uh, what are attri attri attributes for alias, for example? Right. Let's go for it with the default. So that that's the that's the attributes that the system administrator has: uh, CN, object class, description, and well, the other things I haven't really added. So where is it? No specific. Goza object class. There's an object class, yeah. So that's that's maybe specific. What? Sorry. <sighs> okay. Well, I, I guess I won't get it working at this point. But as I said, it's it's uh, it, there is some way to go. I mean, I will I will talk with um, with Mark and try to get it get it going. And well. My personal goal is to get it working for, for example, um, say you got a research group at a university, there is a postdoc who is quite good at Unix, but every two years another person will do the administration and uh, make it easier for those people to set it up and maybe have some other people help them who are not that tech savvy. So I'm not sure whether it will be eventually possible to do that. I mean, it's clear that it's, it's a viable thing in so far as the city of Munich is using it for a couple of thousand uh, workstations already. And it just needs quite a lot more integration now. Okay, so if there is no more further questions, is there? Okay, well, thank you.